Hey everybody, Mark here, also Two Robot Guy, with a quick uh, demonstration of my entry for the NASA Handrail uh, Challenge, um, sponsored by GrabCAD. Um, so, uh, I saw this challenge uh, about a week ago and I thought it was really interesting. Um, so I got into, uh, got into start sketching up and, and thought about, well, what, what are we looking for here? So the key key takeaways that I saw once I read through it and watched some videos of the International Space Center was um, obviously the smaller the better. Um, so you use the least amount of plastic as possible. It has to be 3D printed on a fused filament device. Um, so it has to abide by um, the rules of how to use that 3D printer and that technology. Um, so limited overhangs. Um, if you do have an overhang less than 45 degrees, um, you can push it up to 60, but really 45 degrees is the maximum overhang that you should have. Um, understanding the strength characteristics of your X, Y, and Z. So your your X, Y is a lot stronger than your X, Z. Um, so the first thing I did was I went and just modeled up the handrail. Um, as you can see, this is just uh, 3D printed uh, two millimeter resolution uh, handrail. Um, I wanted to look online to try to find the handrail, um, but I could not find uh, uh, the right uh, size elliptical aluminum handrail. Um, I did find some that were used for uh, that were used for hanging jackets and stuff at nice uh, at, at like nice closets, uh, but. I could not uh, find the right side handrail, so I just 3D printed it. It wasn't bad. So I started sketching up some ideas, um, and I said, okay, let's try to make something, you know, something really small, low profile, that just twists into place. Um, so you can see here is my first idea. There was kind of a, a cup shape, um, and this one, actually, if you can, you might be able to see that actually it curls, so there's, there's three lofts in here. Um, with the two millimeter offset. So I said, okay, once I print this thing all as one, it's gonna slip in and it can't slide out. Well, that's pretty pretty close. So I printed it, I said, this is gonna be great. This is definitely gonna work. I made it really tight and I twisted it. And as you can see, and I twisted it and <laughs> I noticed my first problem. So as model is not always as, as designed. Um, there's way too much slop in it. Um, playing with some more, if I try to make it tighter, yeah, that'd be that would been great, but once the once a person uh, on the space center would put some item into it and bump it, it would just fall right out. So that was my first idea, horrible failure, um, but it gave me some insight about uh, what 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 I would be looking for. Um, you know, I said, man, if they were up there, they try to bump it out, it's not going to work. So I went and actually looked at some of the other entries, and you know, got some inspiration from them. Um, got some things of what to do and what not to do. Um, so I said, I said, I saw everything that had a clamp that just went and clamped around it that kind of clipped. And a lot of people were doing that. And if you watch the videos of everybody doing that, um, they were just applying forces and trying to use the plastic uh, to to grab on and to bite it. Um, some did really good. Some weren't so great. Um, but I, I wanted to go in a different concept. So. Uh, my first proof of concept was this item right here. So I know you can't have, this is a, an M, M8 threaded uh, rod and two nuts. I know you can't have that up there, but I want to say, can this clamping force of this actually hold it into place? So it's just, just 3D printed it really quick. Let me slide my assembly. Let me slide the rail in and I'm going to tighten it down for you. But let me see if I can get a wrench over here. And we're tightening it down really strong. So, can it hold it? Yeah, I would say if I I really I really applied a lot of force to it, yeah, it's definitely going to hold it. So, uh, I, this is my first proof of concept. I said, man, that definitely can hold it. So, I did some research about 3D printing and threads. Uh, to try to learn more. I've never designed a thread in my life. Um, so this was definitely a challenge for me. Um, but looking at different thread profiles, I didn't know that there were so many. Uh, but I came across this one that was really interesting. 
So I don't know if you can see this. Let's see if you can. But these are actually called uh, buttress threads. Uh, this with his cutouts called a breech lock. Uh, typically any cannon or any big artillery, uh, this was designed so you could push it in and do a slight twist. So, I don't know, let's see if we can, maybe you can see inside there. Um, so it's really interesting about this is you can go and push this into place, do a turn, and it's it's strong. It's a very strong connection. But a quarter turn, and it'll come right out. You see that? So you put it in, quarter turn, locks in, turn comes right out. So, uh, so that was my first, that was my idea. So I said, man, I'm going to make this, this uh, breech lock style uh, handle. So you just be super simple. So you go and put your rail inside of it. You would, you would slide it in. Try to do it for the camera, but you would slide this pin in. There we go. And you would give it a, a good turn. See if we can. You give it. Do I have the right piece in? Let me see. Wait a sec. Sorry, technical difficulty. Always happens on this one, and I'll show you why. Um, but you give it a good turn, and it would lock itself into place. So here we go. There we go. I didn't have it all the way. So you give it a good turn, and it would lock itself into place. So it's a, it's a pretty strong connection. Um, but the one thing I did not like was. It, it went over this. So let's say you had your camera or whatever in, inside the slot. Um, this thing would have to go past it so you could undo it. And that's cool, but really, I'd probably say the clamps. I don't know, you know, without asking an astronaut, um, do they leave their object on there? Do they not? Um, but also, let's say they wanted to move it so they're doing a, a test or something. And so this thing is always going to go in your way you know, when you're trying to lock, lock this thing down. And I was like, oh man, they're not going to like that. They're going to want to be able to unlock it, slide it out, slide it to the next location, and then lock it back down without it interfering um, with this. So I learned a lot about this and kind of why it was working, what, what the advantages and disadvantages are. So you can see there's actually four, um, four threads here or four different, um, slotted threads here um, this was great so this is this is actually a ANSI um, buttress 745 uh, 7 degree 45 um, cut pattern into it I went and looked on Wikipedia was able to find it um, this is great so I actually put it to four millimeters um, that's my pitch uh, but with four millimeters and then each one of these is a fourth it only gave me um, right at uh, with a with a quarter turn, it it gave me less than a millimeter um, to actually pull down this object. So it didn't really give me that much give me that much play uh, to be able to go in and lock it down. So I did a little bit more research, went and worked on the design a little bit more, and came up um, with this one right here. So you can see this one is significantly smaller than this one. So I was able to cut a lot of the extra weight off. So here's here's here it is. I would say Gen Gen two or Gen two. That's I could say Gen one or prototype. And this is my Gen three design. You can see it's much smaller. There we go. It's much smaller. I'm um, in all directions. Much thinner. This took uh, less than four hours of print um, on my Da Vinci uh, 3D printer. And uh, and that's, you know, basically the difference. This one took, I think, six hours. This was right at, at four hours. Um, but here's some, here's some features about it. Uh, the handle is recessed now. The handle now is recessed. So when you are turning the lock, you cannot go past this point. So you can see you can't go past, you can't go past this when you're trying to lock it into place. Um, it's thinner. I made some more cuts. So you can see I put some more, 45s on it right here. So I made some more 45 cuts as well as on the back side just to lighten it up as well. Um, put all my fillets on. Um, but the key difference with this thing, as you'll see, is now there's only two. Um, there is only uh, uh, two blades instead of the other one that I had was four blades. 
Um, so, uh, and you can see it's much shorter as well. Same diameter, same pitch style, um, but there's the difference. So the first thing that I did when I put this on, I just, I just put this on, I slid this into place. So I slid this into place, so just like that, right? And then I put my rod in. There you go, maybe you can see that a little bit better. So I put my rod in. My handle's right here, so this is this will just come right out. There we go. It'll slide right back in. In gravity, that wouldn't happen, but it would slide right back in. So you slide it right in, right out. And then squeeze it a little bit. Make sure your rod's all the way into place. Bring it down until you can't bring it down anymore, and it's in, man. It's not going anywhere. Uh, so you can see the, the lever's not even fully depressed. But that the buttress uh, style threads are actually special. Maybe you can see it, um, but they have a 45 and then basically no relief. Uh, buttress will give you uh, the strongest strength in one direction of the threads, and the other direction it really doesn't give you any strength. So why they use them in the cannons is because when, as when the uh, the explosion occurs, it'll push that thread to the back, uh, but that will give you the most amount of strength that you can have. Um, in the thread cut pattern, but oh man, <laughs> it's not going anywhere. Now this is also 3D printed at two millimeters, um, so maybe it's giving a little bit more strength. But you can see I haven't even fully depressed my handle yet. Um, so how this thing works is you'll see. There we go. So there we go. So let's say you wanted to move it. Let's say you wanted to move it up or down the rail. All you gotta do is slide it down, make sure this is parallel, it slips right into place, lock it down, and you're there. So, um, super simple to operate. You have your, your, your threaded path, so you can put your nut in and twist it down. Um, when you have your object uh, threaded in, uh, this handle won't, won't be in the way, so you'll be able to grab it below. So if there's something right there, you'll be able to grab it below, pop it up, slide it forwards, and then put it right back down. So wherever you want to put it on the pattern, and then or wherever you want to put it on the rail, and then when you want to store it somewhere else, you can just undo it into your three pieces, slide it back into place, lock it back down, and there it is. It's It will stay just like that um, without a problem. And that's about it. You could, it, it can be, it's printed in two, uh, that's what I was going to talk about. It's printed in two different um, builds. You can print, uh, this one is vertical, so you can print this one vertical and like that. And this one is vertical just like that. So you print these two on the platen just like that. You print this at 50 or at two millimeters. I did thick wall to give these buttresses a little bit more strength. Um, and at 50% infill, just the standard 45 infill. And this right here needs to be printed at uh, 90 or the highest infill possible so you can get the full strength out of it. Um, and that will just give you uh, the most amount of strength to be able to hold it into place. And, oh, that's about it. I did not print this on a really expensive machine. I printed on my... Uh, da Vinci uh, 3D printer uh, that retails for $500. Um, you can buy them on Amazon. Um, but great printer, um, no tweaks. So this is just right off the bed. It slid right into place and it locked into place. So I'll show it to you one more time um, to show you kind of the strength of it. Oh, and also one thing I, I didn't hear anybody talk about on the forms or anything, um, but I work in a clean room environment. For my job and being an industrial engineer it's really critical to reduce the amount of areas for dust or, or junk to collect especially i mean obviously in the international space center it is a clean room environment um, so i try to design this whole thing as well uh, with limited um limited services or, you know, cutouts or depressions for dust or junk to get into. Um, so 
if you cut in NASA or any other words into it, that's just another trapping place uh, for, for junk. So let's do it as they would um, in the Space Center. So you grab your, both your pieces that just slide right apart. Um, you, you push it into place. Then once it's pushed into place, you slide your handle up. There we go. Slide your handle up, locking it into place, and you're not you're not budging, man. Um, but you might be able to see how it, how it works here. Is that when this is pulled together, uh, this cut is not um, it's actually not a straight cut or an offset. Uh, there's actually uh, an angle cut into it, so it uses this back part as a fulcrum. Um, so when you're biting it down, it bites hopefully here and here pulling it together, giving it the strength, but it's not coming undone, man. It is rock solid. Um, I'm going to post this model online, hopefully on, on the GrabCAD website. Uh, I'm going to release all my files today. Um, you know, this is a community effort. Um, you know, there's a prize to win, but um, I'm going to post how I design mine and some more videos about it. And if anybody has any other really good ideas, please, you know, use my design. Um, you know, if you want to use this, this cam locking system, uh, please use it in yours. You're more than welcome to. Um, and let's just see what kind of the best hand grip that we all can build. Um, so signing off, Mark or Two Robot Guy, you can check out my YouTube channel. Um, that'll be linked to here um, with some other stuff I've been working with, 3D printers. And uh, good luck and hope this helps out.